Here's the Amazon regional network, 14, 14 um, regions all across the globe, four more announced for, ne for next year. Great news. I love what we've got. We're going, to have 18, we're going to have 18 regions at that point. And these regions are real regions. These are AWS regions. regions. These are not, hey, I, I stuck, two, uh, stuck two racks in opposite ends of the same data center, and they're relatively independent. And there's a wall between them, so fires are unlikely to spread. And there probably won't be a flood. So those are availability zones. No. We, our availability zones are real. They're, they're separate buildings, and they actually do survive through all of those different faults. And I'll show you in detail, because I, I want you to see exactly what the difference is. And the best way to know the difference is to see the difference. Simple as that. 68 points of present, presence spread out through the entire globe. This is the one that's great. You haven't seen this before. I got a question two years ago saying, does Amazon have a private network? Do, do you deploy uh, private networks? Is there any, do you spend on that? A lot of companies talk a lot about it. Have you considered that? Yeah, we thought about it. <laughs> that is all 100% Amazon controlled resources. That's AWS. If you're flowing between one region and another, it's flowing on that network. It's, that network is managed by one company. It's not passed from one provider to another transit provider to another interconnection site to another interconnection site. These interconnection sites are wonderful, wonderful, very committed individuals. But my rule is, if you've got a packet, the more people that touch it, the less likely it is to get delivered. It's as simple as that. It's, it's just one administrative domain is way better than many administrative domains. And sometimes in the internet, weird things happen, like one company is not getting along exactly with another company, and they're trying to work on a contract. And maybe the resources get a little squeezed during that time to kind of rush the contract along. We're not going to do that. So if it's running on our network, it's under our operational control. We give you better quality of service. And we always have assets, we always have assets to be able to survive a fault. There's no way we want, a single link will ever, will ever have any impact on anyone in this room because we have the capacity to survive a link failure and we engineer it that way. Simple. It's, 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 we'd be crazy not to. This, by the way, is not just a little tiny 10 gig network. This is a 100 gig network. Every one of those links that I show you, 100 gig. Every one of them. 100 gig absolutely everywhere. And of course, 100 gigs not enough for, mo for many places. And so it's many, many parallel 100 gig links all over the place. So this is a relatively, uh, this is a pretty important asset. When we started this, I got to admit, I was a little concerned because it's really, really, really expensive. And so I'm concerned the networking team is 100% committed that this is the right thing to do. Um, from a quality of service perspective, absolutely the right thing to do. And you know something? If you, the team is really good at finding great value. And so these private resources that we have available, they're short-term leases, long-term leases, they're dark fiber that are lit under IRUs. They're, we're in, one, in several cases now, we're laying our own cable. And so everything's available. We'll do anything, that, whatever's most cost-effective to get the resources that we need to be able to serve is what we do. And because we're not religious about there's one true way and we have to it, it's, we get good value. 